I got cheap books. Hi, welcome back to my channel, Manga Hoarder. My name is Laura, and today I'm doing a haul video. These are all going to be books that I bought at a local comic book store on their last week um, being open, so it was a closing out sale. Um, as it turns out, this was actually a store that was selling secondhand manga or used comics and manga, um, and I didn't know that, and I really am disappointed that I didn't know, because I definitely would have gone to visit them before they closed their doors. Um, unfortunately, they're just on the other side of the city, and so even though there's other comic book stores around, it just takes so long for you to travel across the city. Our city is very sprawling. Um, so I never had a chance to go and um, because I saw this advertisement, of course, I made plans and uh, went out there and uh, checked out what they had and bought what I could. Um, so I did actually get quite a few good titles. I did fill in some gaps. I completed series I was collecting um, and I ended up picking up another title that's on my 1001 comics, You Must Read Before You Die list, which I was completely unexpected. Um, it was something I didn't even think I was going to be able to collect any of this year, so I'm really pleased about that. Um, so I'm just going to go through and show you what I've got, and I'm pretty happy about it, um, and hopefully you will find this interesting. So the first title I have to show you is actually Yuri or Shoujo Ai, I'm not entirely sure, um, but it is something that uh, fills in some holes for us. We've had for a long time on our shelves and uh, just never been really able to read it. That is Kashimashi Girl Meets Girl. This is a story by Satoru Akahori, art by Yuki Mor Yuki Maru Katsura, an original character designed by Sukune Inugami. Um, and I ended up getting volume one and volume three, and we already have volume two. So this is a five volume long series. I don't know if it's complete in five volumes, but I think that's what's available in English. Um, and now I have volumes one through three, which is really great. I think that this is a story about um, possibly a boy who gets um, maybe like taken by aliens and then when is returned, is returned in the body of a girl or is returned as a girl and now ends up going to an all-girl scroll or something like that. I feel like there's like, it's sort of a comedy romance, but I'm not entirely sure. It's been a very long time since I've really read anything about this. Um, and I was only aware of this because I had seen the first, uh, first episode of the anime at an anime convention here in the city way back before this was even published. So this came out in 2005, so that's me going back to my what my memory is of this, um, and you know, 13 years, 13 plus years of of uh, not thinking about this series is a long time. So um, at any rate, it was really interesting to see it here at the sale, and I'm really glad to be able to add to my collection of something that's just been sitting really incomplete for so long. I ended up getting another volume of Hell Girl. This is by Miyuki Eto original story by the Jikoku Shoujo Project. I have volume one and two already. This is volume three, so it, you know, continues in the series, which is fantastic. Um, another series that I've had for a very long time, but um, just when I had read it originally, I hadn't really enjoyed it. I reread it again. I can't remember if it was last year or the year before, but I thought it was fantastic. Um, and I really wanted to read more, and I was so disappointed that I hadn't collected more, so I was really grateful to see another volume of this. This is basically a series of episodic stories that it's sort of a shoujo horror. Uh, I don't know if it's actually shoujo. Um, I will have to look that up, and uh, if it's shoujo, I will put it right here. Um, if not, I will put whatever it is right here. Um, but at any rate, this is basically the story about Hell Girl, and she um, is contacted by her cell phone. So if you have something, some situation in your life that needs dealing with, you need someone in your life to be punished, you can contact Hell Girl, and she will come and she will punish them in exchange for your soul. So she will send them to hell in some horrible situations, horrible way, but then at the end of your life, you also will be sent to hell. And so that's sort of your compromise for having this person punished right at the start. Um, the two volumes that I have read, the situations were all quite extreme and they were all situations where instead of maybe contacting Hell Girl, you probably should have contacted the police. Um, but they were very entertaining in the way that the people were punished, and it reminded me so much of Dante's Inferno. And I know that that's sort of a weird comparison, but it really 
worked for me and I just enjoyed it so so much so really looking forward to reading a little more of this I know there's quite a bit more available and hopefully I'll get my hands on it sometime I ended up picking up a single volume of short stories by Natsuki Takaya, which is the same author as Fruits Basket. This is Songs to Make You Smile. I don't know anything about it except for that it is short stories, and that's Natsuki Takaya, and that's probably enough. Um, and I'm really glad that it is a single volume because I know that I don't... I'm not opening up gaps in my collection. I don't have to collect more to complete the series. I can just sort of enjoy what's here, and these are really good type stories to just pick up when you have a few minutes, when you're feeling a little bit bored but you don't want to read a whole series, or when you're doing a readathon and you want just something really short. Um, you know, you don't want to keep starting a whole bunch of series, so I probably will save it for a readathon or a 24-hour a thon thing um, and read it then, but I was happy to find this for just a couple bucks. The next thing that I picked up is actually something that I have new in my collection. That is Volume 1 of Pastel by Yoshihiko Kobayashi. I actually don't know anything about this story. I never really looked into it. I had bought it from someone who was just selling, kind of locally selling their collection off. And I picked it up along with a whole bunch of other volumes. And this series that they had sold to me, they were missing Volume 1 and 2. Um, they did actually probably have Volume 2 at the sale. But I only remembered that I was missing the beginning of the series. I didn't remember what volume. So I picked up volume one. Um, luckily, I had volume one. Um, unfortunately, I'm still missing volume two. But I do think I have what is available in English apart from that second volume. So I will kind of look around for that uh, going forward. Um, but I was really happy to pick up uh, volume one because, you know, it feels a little more complete when you actually have the first volume. Um, yeah, when I went to the sale, I didn't actually have my list with me, and the list that I had was, you know, on my phone, but it was actually several years out of date, so it wasn't very useful at all. Um, so I really was going by memory, and I was really actually pleased with how well I remembered what's in my collection, because it is so large, and there are so many gaps, and, you know, just remembering volume one, or am I missing volume three, or am I missing volume 14, like, it's, it's hard to keep all of that straight without a list, so I was really... You know, even though I'm, I missed it picking up Volume 2, I was still really happy that I remembered I was missing Volume 1, so... Um, yeah, I can't tell you anything else besides that. I don't know if this one got uh, picked up and is online. I can't remember. It was originally published by Del Rey, so... I can't remember. I certainly know that it was dropped, though, um, and uh, it's incomplete in the physical format, but I can't remember if there's a digital copy. Um, if I look that up and check it out, I will let you know up here. I picked up a new series. This is Telepathic Wanderers, story by Yasutaka Tsutsui and art by Sayaka Yamazaki. Um, it is volume one, which is why I picked it up, but more importantly, I picked it up because I recognize the author, Yasutaka Tsutsui. I know I have pronounced this name before. I know I have spoken it in a video. Um, and so I ended up looking it up because I didn't remember who it was, I just knew that I had seen this name before. Um, and so this happens to be the same author as A Girl Who Leapt Through Time and Paprika. Um, and I have uh, read Girl Who, Who Leapt Through Time. I have read the novel as well. Um, this is actually the author of the, the novels. Um, I don't know if he's technically, I think he's probably the story by, but adapted by someone else, I would suspect. Um, so I don't really know what this is about. I really pick this on the author's name alone and the fact that it was a volume one and that's, you know, good enough for me when things are cheap. I'm happy with that. I was really pleased to find this uh, volume five, which is the final volume of Gunsmith Cat's Burst um, by Kenichi Sonoda. I have volumes one through four already, so now I have the complete series. I've never actually read this one. I have read a little bit of the other Gunsmith Cats and I've also watched the anime Riding Bean. Um, probably also the anime of Gunsmith Cats. I don't really, really remember. Um, I think these are girls who are police officers. I think that that's what this is. I can't even remember. I don't remember this almost at all. Um, except for that I remember it being a lot of fun. So I'm looking forward to reading this. Definitely we'll try and get to it. Um, you know, last year I ended up completing a whole bunch of series that were out of print and now they're on my TBR for this year. Hopefully I won't wait until next year to read this, but if I don't get to it, I will put it on my TBR for next year. Um, and when we get there, please remind me, because I definitely want to read this soon. 
I picked up this really strange uh, little manga. This is Oh My Goddess, Adventures of Mini Goddess by Kosuke Fujishima. You can see that it is uh, just such a strange size. It's very narrow. It is a yonkoma where the panels, there's a single panel per page and then this huge gutter. Um, so I don't really know what that's about, but this was a single volume. I think it was the only volume in this series that was published. I don't know if these are even the, the side stories that came with uh, the Oh My Goddess manga. I don't really know, or Oh My Goddess. Um, yeah, I don't know, but I'd never seen this before, and I'm really pleased having it, because it was something I just didn't know existed. Um, and it's just such a cute, strange little book. So yeah, I'm happy about this one found another volume of BioBooster Armor Giver. This one is Escape from Kronos by Yoshiki Takaya. Um, it is volume 3, I think, and I have, I think, volume 3, 4, 5 now, possibly. These ones are a little bit difficult because if you, well, you might not be able to see on the video, but there's actually no numbering. Um, what you do is you kind of determine what volume it is by the title. It does actually say like inside, if you actually go in, it'll say uh, this volume contains Bio Booster Part 3 in its entirety. So, like, it's just, it's hidden away. It's not as easy to collect these because you really do have to remember them by the title or the color. Um, so I was, I was pretty sure I hadn't seen this dark blue one on the shelf. <laughs> and that's the only reason that I picked it up. I was just sort of crossing my fingers. I hope we don't have this one already. Um, and we didn't. And... Um, apart from that, I don't actually know what the story is about, but one day I will when I get to reading it. Um, hopefully I will find the other two volumes, three volumes, however many volumes I'm missing, and hopefully they will join the collection and I get to read this at some point. Um, it looks pretty, pretty crazy. The characters in it look, uh, you can see them in the background maybe, they look a lot like uh, the characters in Parasite. Uh, quite fun. Definitely has an, an old art feeling. Kind of see the art there. Um, and the binding actually is really super tight, so I almost wonder if nobody ever read this. Um, it will get read one day, and we can loosen that binding up. It looks like a lot of fun, though. I think I'm going to really enjoy this one. Uh, I picked up a Seinen Samurai manga. This is Satsuma Gishiden, The Legend of the Satsuma Samurai by Hiroshi Hirata. I mostly picked this up because it looks like a gritty samurai story, which I really like. Um, and it also looks like a series that I have in Japanese. And I actually had thought maybe it was the same one, but I think it's the same author. I don't think it's the same story. So um, I had picked this one up at a secondhand sale, like for pennies. Um, and so it's just in my collection. I don't even know what the title is off the top of my head. Um, but I think it's the same author. Um, but at any rate, I like having manga in my collection, obviously. Um, this one is, I think, the same author. I think this one was five volumes long, but it was dropped after volume three. It's a Dark Horse publication. Um, so now I will be on the lookout for volumes two and three. Uh, the artwork in it is quite nice. You can see it there. Uh, it looks pretty good. Lo really bloody, high action, um, quite exciting. Let's see. I don't know how, uh, how much I can share. It looks quite good. So I'll look forward to reading this at some point. Um, it is volume one, so of course I can pick it up at any time. And uh, I'm assuming it's good. We'll see. I actually picked this one sort of up as a joke. I gave it to my sister. This is Lagoon Engine Einsatz by Yukiro, Yukiru Sugisaki. Um, as you can see at the top, it says from the creator of Dean Angel. Um, and it's just a sort of like a, another sort of strange format. You can see it's a quite wide trim. Um, the artwork in it looks like this. It just sort of looks like a quirky, not very good story, personally. Uh, we do also have Lagoon Engine, which uh, neither of us actually cared for. So it was more of just sort of a, a joke title. Uh, still, we'll read it. Um, and it is, it looks sort of like a one shot or a single story. So. Um, should be kind of fun. This one was published by ADV. I ended up getting another volume of Dance Till Tomorrow. This is by Naoki Yamamoto. Um, this is volume four, and again, another one where I was just crossing my fingers. I don't remember what volumes I'm missing, but I don't remember this t this cover, so um, I picked it up. Luckily, I was missing this one. Um, I think I have now 
three, four, five or something. I have three in a row. Um, this one is again another shortish series. I think it's about seven volumes long and it was completely published in English but the volumes are quite hard to find. So very pleased to be able to find uh, this for very, very cheap. Um, luckily these this going out sale really, really was a good timing for me. Um, this is supposed to be sort of a, I think, kind of a melodramatic uh, love story where a girl sort of um, possesses the mind of, not not like literally possessing, but just sort of, um, it becomes the infatuation of uh, a prospective college student. Um, I think his life kind of gets turned upside down uh, when he meets her. That is what I gather from this story, um, but I don't really need to read too much about it until I actually get to read it, so we will see. I've heard really good things about it, and I am looking forward to collecting it all one day. Um, the next title I picked up is X1999. Um, this subtitle is Rhapsody by Clamp. This is uh, volume 7 of the series. If you don't recognize this volume in particular. Um, this is probably the first edition of it. It was actually published by An America Extra before they became Viz, and then after that Viz produced them in sort of that standard size manga, and then after that they're now published in a 3-in-1, I think. Um, I do have a little bit in this tall, big size, and then I do have a little bit in sort of the standard size, and we happen to be missing volume 7. Um, a couple of other volumes closer to the end, but I was very impressed that I picked one at the beginning that we were missing, so that was really great. Um, and I have never actually read X. I watched a little bit of the anime back in the day. I don't remember too much about it, but it is Clamp, so I'm happy to collect anything that they've produced um, in any format, so uh, hopefully again We'll have this complete sometime, but I do have now one through eight, I think, of the series. I could actually read a good chunk of it. Another title that I completed, um, or at least completed what's in English, this is Canon God Ixation Stage 5 by Kenichi Sonoda, same author as Gunsmith Cats. Um, again, a title that I don't know much about, but it is five volumes long in English. Um, it was dropped after that. I think it's only like seven volumes long in total, um, so we just missed out a little bit. Um, I think that this one had his more like set in space or something. Oh yeah. It does seem to be sort of like alien spaceships. Um, don't really know what the story is about, but it definitely has uh, like aliens or elves or something going on in it. Um, but I am really happy to have this series complete. I only just started collecting this in, within the last year, I think, so um, it was pretty quick to be able to pick up all these volumes for really, really cheap. So I'm really happy about that. Again, another title that if I don't get to it this year will hopefully be on my TBR next year. At least that's the plan at the moment, but you know, 12 months from now, I might change my mind. We will see, um, but it should be a lot of fun. Um, this era of manga is just really appealing to me. Uh, the next title I picked up, I actually picked up on a recommendation of um, Dynamic Dylan, who um, recommended this to me when I was a uh, pretty new uh, YouTuber, so almost three years ago. Um, and it was something that I had wanted to pick up, but it was, you know, out of print, unavailable. Um, some of the volumes were available, and I think some are still available, um, but most of them weren't. And uh, I was able to pick up most of the series. I'm now missing the first two and the last two of the series, and hopefully we'll be able to complete um, the series soon. And that happens to be uh, Mao Juvenile Remix. Original story by Kotaro Isaka and story and art by Megami Osuga. Um, it sounds like there is a uh, group of vigilantes who are trying to sort of save the city from a crime wave, and then there's a high school student who has the power of ventriloquism, not really sure what that's about, and is trying to discover their identity. Don't know at all, but I was recommended it, and um, has been sort of on my list in my cart for a long time waiting for a chance to pick it up. So this was my chance. Um, so I ended up getting volume 3, volume 4, volume 5, volume 6, volume 7, and volume 8. So I'm missing 1, 2, and 9, 10, um, which is pretty great because uh, being able to pick up 
so much of the series for the price that it is means that I can, um, you know, spend some time actually looking for the other couple of volumes. Shouldn't be as hard to complete now. Um, and this was actually published by Viz in their Shonen Sunday imprint. Um, and I never really saw too many people pick it up. I don't even remember seeing it on the shelf. So if anyone's actually read this title, let me know what you think of it. I'm really curious about it. And then the last title is one that I picked up for my 1001 Comics to Read project where I'm buying all of the books that I can find or available within my price range um, in that book. Um, and I, this is a title that is so out of print, the volumes are really hard to find. And when you do find them listed anywhere, they're like $40 plus, which is just way, way outside my price range. Um, and I was able to collect more than half of the series of 25 volumes, so I am very excited about it. It's something I've wanted in my collection for years anyway, and you know, when I decided that I was going to start collecting it, it was just out of print, so it was just, it was gone. Um, so now I have a good chunk of it. It's a lot easier to work on my collection when it's like this. Um, and that happens to be Nodame Katabile by Tomoko Nino Mia. Um, it actually says the winner of the Kodansha Manga of the Year Award. It's a really great series. I have actually read a good portion of this because the library used to have it. I also have watched the live action drama of it. Um, and it's just, it's such a fantastic live action. I think I've actually watched the um, animated series as well. Um, and it's just, it's such a good series. It's basically the story of two, um, I would say almost genius um, music students. One uh, who happens to be this girl, she's a little bit more of a, an idiot savant type. You know, she's just really um, uh, socially awkward, but not in a way that she cares. Um, she's just completely her own thing. She's just very much like into the music. Um, doesn't take care of herself, it just wants to play, and she plays the way she wants to play. Um, and she ends up living next door to another music student who's also taking piano, and he's been always told, you know, like, proper form and perfect form, and, and he has other ideas, other plans for himself, and so because they meet each other and because she's so kind of carefree and he's so rigid, they kind of help each other out. Um, but it's a really fantastic series, and I'm very, very pleased to have so much of this um, to have been able to pick it up because it was something I never thought that I was going to be picking up this year, uh, even though it was on my list. So um, as soon as I saw it there, I kind of put everything down and I was just like, I got to grab these before anyone else sees them. There was no one else in the store, but I was just like, I got to grab these. Um, so yeah, really, really happy to have this. So I ended up getting volume four, volume five, volume six, volume seven, volume nine, volume 11, Volume 12, Volume 13, Volume 14, Volume 15, and Volume 16. So I got a really good chunk of this. I'm so happy about it. Um, you have no idea how pleased I am to have that in my collection. It was really great find for me. Um, so that's it. That's everything that I ended up picking up this closing out sale. I'm really happy with everything. I picked up a lot of titles that filled in gaps or were things that I was really looking for. So I was really, really happy with this haul. It was a very good shopping trip for me. Um, yeah, I had a really good time. Um, so anyway, that's everything I picked up. Let me know um, if you've read any of these titles. I'd love to know what your thoughts are on them, particularly some of the titles that I haven't read. I'd really like to hear someone talk about them because a lot of these I haven't, the newish ones I haven't really heard of uh, anyone talking about before. So I'd love to hear your thoughts on them. Um, anyway, I think that's it for me today. So thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.